So yeah, if we hadn't had 9-11, then, you know, the Cold War was over. We could have had peace in the world. But 9-11 facilitated this global war on terror. And so, so how do you view this war on terror, you know, as a Middle Eastern person? It's, it's an assault on the indigenous people of the Middle East primarily. It's an attack on, on your people. And, and so how, how do you feel is the best way for, for us to resist this ongoing? I mean, it's an ongoing war on terror. Now it's Libya and probably Syria. You know, it's likely that NATO may intervene in Syria, you know, even more overtly than they're doing covertly currently. So how, how do you view, um, you know, what, what is the war on terror? What does it mean to you, if, if that makes sense? For me, I think it's more like a war of terror, not a war on terror. And not only because of the millions of civilians that have been killed in the process of it, but also because all of these terrorist groups have become more powerful out of it. And it, it sort of reminds me of the, the war on drugs. Because in reality, that was a war to control drugs and for the CIA to gain money from selling them. Um, it's just as Orwell's 1984, and it's one of my favorite books, so I quote it a lot. But it's just a means for perpetual war, um, as he described in his book. And terror, you know, the U.S is one of the biggest purveyors of terror. Um, it's got the largest military in the world, and it uses it against um, helpless countries. So terror is just a strategy of war, and it's been used by um, many imperialist nations. So to say war on terror, you know, it's you're basically setting yourself up for perpetual war, because terror is always going to exist as a strategy. Um, they did not say war on Al-Qaeda, they did not say war on uh, specific, something specific, because that would mean that eventually they would have to stop fighting. And that doesn't seem like what they want to do. Yeah. Okay, well, I've, I've really been grateful for this interview. I just wanted to uh, segue back into the Middle East in terms of uh, uh, Iran and Russia and China, people who are supporting Syria. Um, you know, when I've been trying to make the case to activists here that people are misdiagnosing the situation in Syria. They're saying to me often, oh, you're just spouting Russian propaganda or Chinese propaganda. Is there propaganda being disseminated in defense of President Assad? Could it be that someone like myself who feels that I should be standing in solidarity with stability and peace in Syria? Am I becoming a tool of Chinese and Russian propaganda? Like how, how is it working both ways? You know, yeah, we have all this US Israeli propaganda against Assad, but is there propaganda coming the other way? Of course, I mean the first, the first uh, casualty of war is the truth. Hmm. I'm not a propagandist. I'm gonna flat out tell you that. Of course, there's gonna be propaganda on both sides. Propaganda does not necessarily mean telling a lie. It just means propagation of an idea. Hmm. So, in in in, you know, a good propaganda is just someone who propagates an idea well. They only, um, well, when I say I'm not a propagandist, I, what I mean is I don't use lies to propagate my agenda. Mm. But what we do see in the Western media is a lot of use of lies. And, uh, you know, you could paint a pretty picture on both sides, but from the West they're using blatant blatant lies that have been exposed time and time again. And as for Russia and Iran, you know, by supporting them, they're saying, oh, you know, both sides are as bad as each other. I don't think so. You have to look at who is the, the uh, aggressor here. The aggressor here is the U.S. The, 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 and Israel. Those are the people that are trying to destabilize Syria. Iran, Russia, they're trying to hold it together. So, yeah, maybe you might, and they're doing it, of course, because of their own um, agenda. Mm. But at the end of the day, what are you going to support? Are you going to support the side that are co sending insurgents and mercenaries into Syria? 
or are you going to support leaving people alone and leaving sovereign nations to remain sovereign? I think that is probably one of the, the axioms that someone should follow when they're dealing with politics and geopolitics, that sovereignty is something that should not be touched and should be respected. And when you disrespect it, bad things happen. So whatever side is um, on the side of sovereignty, that's the side that you should support. And, um, yeah, and all through the Cold War, <laughs> Russia, I mean, it was in Russia's interest, you know, as a big power to do this, but they often sponsored, you know, just causes throughout the Cold War. The, Russia was in, on side with the African National Congress, while Western governments were sponsoring white minority regimes. Uh, the U.S. fought Hitler, and, and it was in its imperial interest to do so, but it was a just cause, right? And so I think the fact that Russia and China are sponsoring or helping Assad is draw, in this context, it strikes me that it may be a just cause because at this time, uh, the alternative is to side with the sectarian groups that will lead to civil war and carnage, the kind of carnage we've seen in Lebanon and Iraq. Do you think that there's a plan by Israel? And I've read documents from Israeli scholars uh, there's a document called A Strategy for Israel in the 1980s by Oded Yenon. And he talks about Israel being, it would be rational for Israel to uh, break up the Middle East into ethnic statelets, into a mosaic of ethnic, uh, ethno-religious fiefdoms. Do you think that's the grand plan, is to break down the Middle East, kind of like the US did with the Native Americans, put them on reservations, like break down the Middle East along sectarian lines so it will be weak and unable to stand up to big powers? Is that the, is that the big plan? I've actually seen a map of the Middle East as it is imagined um, by these uh, foreign powers, and it's definitely a divided Middle East. Iraq is divided into three. Even Saudi Arabia is divided, and that is one of their allied countries. So, yeah, I, I definitely believe that the idea is divide and conquer. And if you can get two sides to fight each other and weaken each other, like they did with the Iran-Iraq war, you know, that's two birds with one stone. So um, I can't remember where I've seen the map, and I, I haven't read what you've uh, written. But divide and conquer is is pretty clear, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's what they do. Yeah, they can't um, have the natives. I, I, not, I can't. Uh, um, you previously about you know what side to support which side of World War II, which side of World War I, which, uh, whether Russia's incursions into things. I, I don't, can't really comment on that, only to say that whatever supports sovereignty, I, I stand with those that, that stand with sovereignty. That's, that's the encompassing thing that, that, I, that I would say about any, any war, or internal or external. Yes, and, and you're obviously a very cerebral, intelligent, and well-read person. Could you tell people like how you came to be so informed on these matters? How can people who are perhaps themselves confused and maybe ignorant on certain subjects end up being a Syrian girl? How, how do, what's the blueprint for becoming a Syrian girl? I am quite lazy, actually. <laughs> so I'm, people have thrown ideological books at me and said, you know, you need to read Karl Marx, you need to read uh, such and such. I haven't read a single ideological book in my life. But what I have done is been interested in what's happening right now and also been interested in history. So you can know the, read those facts, whichever article you're reading, which find out what source it's from, and think about what agenda they might have. Read across the board, even read, you know, media that you might feel that is a lie factory, like Fox News and uh, C CNN, but whatever, whatever dis disinformation there is in there, sometimes you get a sense of what the agenda is of um, the enemy. So. My advice is just to be a little bit obsessive about the news and to make your own conclusions because um, you're never going to believe something as strongly as when you have figured it out yourself. Um, that's, that's all you really need to do. 
very much hoping that the viewers enjoy this interview. You're a very articulate, smart, intelligent, bright uh, individual, and we're we're all very uh, proud of you and pleased to have you on the scene. You know, you're a very important activist now who's contributing important analyses, helping us speak truth to power, helping us see through the lies and the deceptions. And uh, you know, today's April seventeenth, two thousand and twelve. I'm Joshua Blakeney. And I Thanks, John.